All right, guys, real quick, I want to talk to you about insulin resistance. If you consume carbs and gain fat from eating carbs, right? If you, some people say, well, when I eat carbs, I feel brain fog. When I eat carbs, I feel sluggish. When I eat carbs, I get bloated. When I eat carbs, I gain weight. If this is you, you are insulin resistant, okay? What is insulin resistance? Okay. Insulin resistance really is the key component of something like diabetes. Well, type 2 diabetes, right? Because type, type 1 diabetes is when your pancreas doesn't release insulin. But type 2 diabetes is when insulin is not having an effect because your insulin receptors of your cells are not allowing glucose to come into the cells. When I talk about the cells, I'm talking about cells that store glucose, like muscle tissue. Right? Muscle tissue is designed to store glucose, right? And that is that is referred to as glycogen. Right? So when the muscle looks full, right? Like here, okay, the muscle is full with that glycogen. Right? So I'm optimized and ready to go for athletic performance. So insulin resistance is when you just can't, can't take advantage of the glucose, right? So you're not getting the energy from the glucose. So it's just floating around your bloodstream, which ain't good. So when you consume carbs and you retain water, that is because your body is keeping the water in the body to try to dilute the glucose, right? And in order to excrete the excess glucose from the body, you need the fluid to do that, right? And the fluid allows the body to filter out the excess glucose is basically how you piss anything out of your bloodstream, right? Like, let's say if you have excess vitamin C, right? Just flushes it right out through urine, like anything else. So, uh, when you're insulin resistant, the glucose isn't getting into your cells. Mm -hmm. Now, why isn't the insulin getting into your cells? What is keeping the insulin, I mean, the insulin, sorry. What is keeping the glucose from getting into your cells, right? The insulin receptors are not bringing in the glucose. Why? Well, there is this thing. It's called intramyocellular lipids. This is when fatty lipids are being stored in the cells. Now, here's the thing. Muscle tissue, you do not want fat in your muscle tissue. Right? You've probably heard of a thing like uh, fatty muscle, right? Or, or a thing like fatty liver which is not good because these cells are not designed to store fat. That's why we have fat cells because fat cells are meant to store fat. Now, if you have an excess level of fatty lipids floating around your bloodstream, right? And spilling out of your fat cells, they end up going into muscle tissue, muscle cells. So now you have muscle cells that are filled with these lipids so there's no room for the glucose. So now cell after cell, muscle after muscle, right, is, is, is retaining these lipids. This is causing you to be insulin resistant, right? So this is a, this is a direct side effect, right, or a direct consequence from having an excess of saturated fat in your diet, <clears throat> right? This is why a standard American diet that is heavy in saturated fat and cholesterol causes obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. These are all excess lipid related issues. This is not an excess carb issue. Right? I can eat carbs the way I do because I'm not insulin resistant because I don't have a fatty diet. Right? So, if you eat carbs and they affect you in this negative way and you're struggling to lose fat and you're struggling to lose weight, it is because you need to fix your insulin sensitivity. You need to increase insulin sensitivity, which means that you got to use the, the, the lipids, right? The fat that's already in these cells, right? And fat gets used. We use fat all the time. It's not like, oh, when you, when you consume uh, carbs, that puts glucose into the body and then 
just like that, your body's no longer burning fat until all the glucose is gone. That's just not true. Me sitting here right now talking to you, this is a low energy activity, which requires the body to run on fat. The body mainly uses glucose for higher intensity activities, like, like maybe running for the bus, right? Or running to get to your car to feed the meter before you get a ticket. <laughs> or lifting weights, right? Playing sports, whatever the case is. Your carbs are used for that. When you're sitting down, talking into the camera like myself, I'm using glucose on a level, right? But I'm also breaking down and metabolizing fat, right? So how do you fix insulin sensitivity? Well, there's a few things you gotta do. Now, in a nutshell, I'm gonna tell you, you have to have, or it would be a good idea to have a whole food plant-based diet. Reason being, a whole food plant-based diet is naturally very low in fat, not unless you're just eating nuts, okay? But if you're gonna have a high carb diet, you gotta reduce your fats so that your fat percentage is in between 10 to 15%. So your macros are gonna be something like 80-10-10, 80% carbs, 10% uh, protein, and 10% fat, okay? Now, if you're a bodybuilder and you're trying to just gain mass, then this is, you don't need to necessarily adhere to 10% protein. You may need more protein depending on what level you are. But for those of you who are just struggling with weight, this is gonna be a good idea for you. 80-10-10, okay? So this works in a few different ways, right? Because number one, you're consuming more fruits and vegetables, which means you're getting more antioxidants. You're getting more minerals and you're getting more fiber. Fiber is very important, okay? Because fiber regulates blood glucose levels. This is important for someone who is uh, insulin resistant. You're gonna wanna regulate your blood glucose levels. And fiber does that. In particular, soluble fiber does that. Number two, uh, fiber regulates cholesterol levels. This is very good because excess cholesterol contributes to weight gain, things like obesity, heart disease, etc. right? So uh, purging excess cholesterol from the body is something that fiber does, so that's very important, right? So if you're coming from a diet where you had tons of serum cholesterol in your diet from meat, dairy, and eggs, you're gonna wanna increase your fiber intake. Uh, number three, right? Fiber um, adds bulk to your fecal matter so that it is easier now to remove waste, physical solid waste from the body. Right now, something like constipation comes from a lack of fluid and a lack of fiber in your body, right? And thus in your feces. So you push out these little black nuggets, right? If you've been constipated before, it feels like 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 marbles, like big thick marbles coming out of your booty holes. <laughs> right? And it, it's like these little nuggets, and it takes forever. It's like a, this ordeal, right? So. When you increase the amount of fiber that you have in your diet, you get you 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 get a, a, a nice hefty solid bowel, right? You can push out that full 12 inches of feces into the toilet bowl and remove the amount of fecal matter that and remove the amount of waste that you need to remove from the body, right? So the fiber is very important in that way. Now also, fiber cleans your intestinal tract. Right, so those leftover ramen noodles that you had from a month ago, that insoluble fiber, that cleans that out, right? Or the, the, the old McDonald's burger where it's so processed it never breaks down so it just sticks in your intestines and just sits there and goes rancid. Yeah, insoluble fiber removes that. It works towards removing that, right? Cleansing, cleaning out, right? Cleaning out your colon and cleaning out your intestinal tract. So the fiber is very important for that, right? Now fiber also feeds probiotics, right? If you've heard probiotics before, right? They're probiotics, right? These biological species known as bacteria or flora, gut flora. Now. Your immune system is, is made up of gut flora, right? Your good gut, gut flora. 70, over 70% 70 of your immune system is in your gut. So if you are eating foods 
right, that don't really have any fiber, you're low in fiber, you're not feeding your immune system, you're not feeding those probiotics. Why go to the store and consume probiotics if you can already feed and grow the probiotics that are already in your gut? Doesn't make any sense, right? You can just cultivate and proliferate the good gut bacteria that's already in your gut by having a healthy diet, right? And increased intake of fiber indicates increase in carbs. So really, what's really wrong with carbs? It helps you, right? So there's the fiber. And then of course, you have pro-oxidants and then you have antioxidants. Pro-oxidants would be things like heme iron, which is iron found in meat, right? It's, a, it's, it's like a class one carcinogen. It's right up there with cigarettes, right? Directly uh, activates cancer cells, right? Directly feeds cancer cells. So this stuff's dangerous, right, in animal products. So you have pro-oxidants. This, this, this causes oxidative stress to the cells of your body, right? Oxidative stress breaks down and destroys you at a cellular level, right? You know, like aging, wrinkles in your skin, right? That's cellular uh, oxidizing over a prolonged period of time. I didn't know how to quite say that just now, right? But basically, when the cells of your body are oxidized over a period of time, when they deal with these, this oxidative stress, right? And that's really what I should be calling it because that's what they refer to it as in the medical text. Oxidative stress, not good, right? And so we're constantly regenerating cells as cells are dying off. And typically in order to stay young, what you want to do is you want to have more cellular regeneration than breakdown. So when you have antioxidants, this limits oxidative stress, which now feeds into a greater cellular regeneration than breakdown. So this preserves your youth. So now you're getting all wrinkly and ugly looking and old and feeling like crap, right? So this is why the antioxidants are important. You're not getting antioxidants from animal products. You're not getting it from milk, butter, lard, eggs, uh, cheese, meat, uh, fish, chicken, none of that. Right? So if you want to get your antioxidants, you're going to have to consume some, some foods with carbs. <laughs> so again, another bonus for carbs, right? Um, okay, cool. So I'm getting into micronutrients now. And the reason why this is important is because when people advocate for a high fat diet, they just strictly talk about macros. So they'll say crazy things like, oh, you can, you can be completely fine and never have to consume a carb in your life. They say stuff, oh, the body requires no carbs whatsoever. This is true if we're just talking about macros, but now if we're applying this to food, it doesn't work. Doesn't work, right? Because meat, dairy, and eggs are not health foods. Sorry. If you want to eat them, cool, right? I mean, I eat a donut occasionally sometimes, right? But I'm not calling it a health food, and it's not a staple of my diet. If you're making a staple of your diet, foods that are not health foods, you're gonna, there's going to be consequences for that, right? So moving on. There are two ways to improve insulin resistance. Number one, whole food, plant-based diet, high in fiber, um, carbs and antioxidants and all minerals, all that good stuff. Number two, fasting. Fasting, what fasting does is it forces your body to use fat for fuel because glucose is gone, right? Once you've depleted your glucose, you're now into what people refer to as a keto, uh, 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 ketosis, right? Where your glucose is completely depleted and now you're just, you're just operating off of fats. So you don't actually have to have a high fat diet in order to reap the benefits of ketosis. You can just fast, right? So you can do this through intermittent fasting, cyclic fasting, uh, or just straight up raw fasting, right? But fasting helps in this way. So if you have, uh, fat uh, storage in cells that are not designed to store fat, fasting will help use that fat and get that fat out of those cells and use them for energy. So there are your two answers right there. Fasting and a whole food plant-based diet. My advice is if you want the fastest result, best thing you can do is both at the same time. 
It's not required. If you had to choose one or the other, I would go with the whole food plant-based diet because there's way more of a health benefit that way. Because you, you don't have to, you don't, you don't necessarily have to get used to being hungry. Right, so I mean, whatever works for you, try both. You know, try the fasting. You can have, you can do intermittent fasting where you have a six to eight hour eating window and a 16 to 18 hour fasting window. You can do cyclic fasting where you have a 22 or a 23 hour fasting window and you just eat one hour out of the day. Uh, or you can just do a whole food plant-based diet, track your macros and target 80, 10, 10. 80% carbs, 10% protein and 10% fat. And there you have it.